Hello fellow Warhammer nerds, Welshie here from the Large Blast podcast, and I'm going to take you through how I model the bases on my new Emperor's Children army. If you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe and check out some of our podcasts. So the first step of making these Slaneshi heretical bases is to mix yourself up some Millie Putt. I absolutely love using this stuff for not just bases, but almost all modelling projects. You can pick it up in local hobby craft stores or online. Just mix the two colours together to make enough that you want and then by hand kind of smooth it roughly over the area that you want to use for imprintation later on. The next step is to roll your milli putt nice and smooth for adding texture to you later. In order to do this I like to use the actual container that the rolling pin comes in from Green Stuff World. Just make sure you get it nice and wet so that as you roll the milli putt doesn't stick to it. Really soak the textured rolling pin from Green Stuff World otherwise it will stick and rip up your base. Take your wet rolling pin and apply even firm pressure across all areas as you roll it once across the base. This will leave a really nice imprint. For these bases I'm using the Dark Ruins textured rolling pins from Green Stuff World but they have a massive range of all kinds of things you can think of so go check them out if you're looking for this kind of base technique. Once you've left the milli putt to dry overnight take a hobby knife and cut the excess overlap from the side you don't have to worry too much if you go over the edges when you're rolling out this because you can just cut it away the next day. I like to use a blunt hobby knife when I do this because I tend to cut towards myself and otherwise it's absolutely terrifying and corn would have a field day. Now the edges all trimmed up, it's time to get a base coat on. I like to use the Halfords primers for doing this. Both the white and the matte black are excellent and give really good smooth coverage. When the base coat is dry, details from the green stuff roller really start to pop and you get an idea of what you need to paint. So it's time to grab some contrast. To do this base I use the Warpstone Glow and Athematic Blue contrast paints. The trick here is to put them both on while they're wet so they mix into each other a little bit. With the Warpstone Glow and other quite thick pigment heavy contrast you may need to mix in a little bit of contrast medium to help dilute them so that they run a little bit better and the white shines through to give that more glowing effect. For the water I wanted to get a really dark and murky look so I used a combination of wildwood and snake bite contrast paints. In the watery bit I laid them on really heavy so as they dried they looked kind of mixed into each other that kind of muddy mixed water feel. Next up it's time to paint the black stone into which the glowing runes sit. The black really gives contrast to the light blue and light green, but you could use any dark colour, maybe a dark purple would look quite cool as well. Take your time when you do this because you don't want any of the black paint to seep into the runes, it will really ruin the effect. You'll notice there's some areas that the rolling pin didn't quite reach and therefore don't have any runes. This is actually quite useful because it means you can go in and add some more texture over the top of those areas to fill them in maybe lead up to the watery pond as if there's some gravel washed up ashore. For this I added some Astro Granite debris and gave it a quick wash with a mixture of Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade. When the Astro Granite debris is dry I wanted to add a little bit of undergrowth, maybe to look like there was some algae or scum floating on the top of the pond. To do this I used some textured grass from Woodland Scenics. To fix it just put a little bit of matte varnish on the area where you want it to stick and then sprinkle carefully over the top. Wait for the varnish to dry and the grass should be fixed in place. I also wanted to add some reeds or tall grass to break up the log a little bit. The easiest way I found to do this is to cut a few bristles off of an old paintbrush, bend them in the middle and then glue them tight at the bottom. You can then stick them down and paint them. The final step is to add the water effect. To achieve this I like to use the UV setting resin from Green Stuff World because it's really viscous. This gives you a lot more time to work with it you don't need to worry about sealing the edges or it running all over the place. Just squeeze it gently out of the bottle onto the area you want to cover and grab a UV light to set it nice and quickly. I like to use this UV light that my girlfriend has for setting her nails but you can get UV torches anywhere. The last thing to do then is add your model. This base was for my converted Lord Discordon that was made up of a combination of that kit and the Hell Pit Abomination from Skaven Age of Sigmar. I basically kit the two things together so that I could make two Lord Discordants and the second one will be up on the Instagram soon. So do follow Meds Paints and Large Blast Podcast to see that. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful for making some truly heretical bases with glowing evil runes. If you have, hit subscribe 
And if you want to hear me and some other guys getting drunk and talking about Warhammer, check out the episodes of the podcast that are all here on YouTube and over on Spotify. Have a great day.